What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be walking you guys through a complete beginner's guide for the brand new iPhone SE. This video is going to start with the complete setup process of the phone and then we're going to dive into some great tips, tricks, and hidden features to use your phone like an absolute pro. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video, a complete beginner's guide for the brand new iPhone SE. When you first unbox your iPhone SE, you're going to notice it's going to come with the phone, obviously. It's also going to come with a manual and its Apple charger to go along with that. But as you can see, the iPhone SE is smaller compared to the iPhone 13 and other previous iPhones that come out. And the good thing about this is that it allows you to carry it easily in your pocket. Some people prefer smaller phones. I know I do. So that's one great part about the iPhone SE. If you don't want to carry a large phone and you don't want that weight in your pocket, you have the iPhone SE, which is a very easy and portable phone to carry with you. And that's one of the great features for the iPhone SE. Obviously, it's cheaper than the iPhone 13 and other new iPhones that come out. But along with that, it's small and portable, making it a great new iPhone. Looking at the design of the iPhone SE, it's obviously smaller like we just discussed, but also has a slick black glass screen in the back and the front has the home button like previous iPhones that do not have that. The iPhone SE keeps the home button if you prefer that. I know a lot of people do. So that's a good thing about the iPhone SE. Also a new feature about the iPhone SE, it's also waterproof resistant. So if it gets wet, no big deal. You don't want to completely submerge it in water, but if it does get some wet drops on it, there's no need to worry. It'll be completely fine. On top of that, the iPhone SE, it may be smaller and might not have all the features of the iPhone 13, for instance, but it's super fast. It actually has the same speed chip as the iPhone 13, and it also has similar graphics that are improved from the previous iPhone SE. So you're still gonna get that fast speed and that high quality when using the iPhone SE. It just doesn't include all the features that a normal iPhone 13 would. But then again, not everyone needs those features, which is why the iPhone 13 or the iPhone SE is a perfect phone for you. And also along with that, it has improved battery. So you're not gonna lose your battery as fast as other previous phones or the previous iPhone SE. So that's one great feature about the iPhone SE. But now since we've shown you guys the design with its glass back and its home button right here, we're gonna dive into the complete setup process of this phone. And I'm gonna show you guys how to walk you through it and how to use this phone to your complete abilities. So once you turn on the phone, it's going to take you to this language page where you're just going to choose which language. I'm going to choose English, obviously. So we're just going to click that. And now it's going to select your country or region. We're going to do the United States. And now we have the option to quick start, which essentially allows you to bring your current iPhone or iPad near this phone to sign in and set up. It makes the setup process so much faster if you do already have an Apple product. And we're going to do that so it's super easy to do. And we'll get started on that right now. To set up quick start. All you have to do is just bring your previous iPhone or iPad near your phone. And then it's going to pop on your up on your previous iPhone. It's going to say set up new iPhone. So we're just going to click continue right now on this and it's gonna to start to load. And now this is the cool part about it. You can hold up your iPhone camera to the new phone. And basically what's gonna happen is we're just going to set that up right now. And now it's loading as you can see. And now we're gonna enter the passcode of your other iPhone. And once you do that, just come back right to this video. So once you put in your password, it's just gonna take a minute to load and it's gonna finish on your new iPhone. You just wanna keep your previous iPhone near the new phone while this information is transferred. It's gonna take a few minutes, but come right back to this video after that is done. And we're gonna move on to the next steps. As you can see, this just popped up on my phone, touch ID. So use your fingerprint in place of your passcode or your app ID for passwords and purchases. So we're gonna click continue right here. And now all you have to do is just set up your um, finger ID. I'm gonna put my thumb right here. And then I'm sure you guys know how to do this process. You just keep tapping your thumb on the iPhone's home button to get a good idea of your fingerprint so it can process that when you wanna enter, go into your new phone or use Apple purchases. So. We're gonna do that quickly, and then we're gonna click adjust your grip, which is keep going to calculate the edges of your print. We'll click continue. So now we're gonna do this. You wanna make sure you get all the edges of your finger on this iPhone so you can have an easy access to get into your phone. And now it's complete, we're gonna click continue. And then we're gonna to go to the next steps after this part is finished. After your fingerprint set up, you have the option where it comes up where it says transfer your data. And this means you can directly transfer your data using your iCloud or transfer from your phone. Since I have my iPhone right next to me, I'm going to continue and click transfer from iPhone. And we're going to click this right here. And now it's going to set up my Apple ID that I currently have on my previous iPhone. And it's going to transfer that data from my previous phone to my brand new iPhone SE. So then the terms and conditions pop up. We're going to just read those quickly. Make sure you read those before moving on. I already read them, but just going to click agree. 
and now it's going to continue to set up your new Apple ID and set up your brand new iPhone SE. So now this pops up where it says make this your new phone and here's everything set up as you had it on your previous iPhone. I prefer this so you don't have to go through your old phone and get new down redownload everything. This is a much easier way to do this. So we're going to click continue right here. And it's going to take us to the next step. So we're going to have our previous cards. If you want to keep those, just click continue. And then if you want to add a new card, you can do that, but we can set this up later. And now it's going to set up Apple Cash. You can always do this later, but it's easier to get it done now, so you don't have to go back to it later, and it'll be a, it could be a hassle, so I prefer doing it now. But come back to this video after this process is set up, and then using Apple Pay, like I said, you can set this up later, but we're going to click Continue right now. And then we're going to want to improve Siri and dictation. So this can help Siri improve by allowing Apple to store and review audio interactions. So you don't have to do this now. I'm going to click not now because this is not something really important. But now, as you can see, it's transferring data from my previous iPhone, which is the iPhone 12, to my brand new iPhone SE. It takes a bit of time, but make sure just to come back to this video after this part's set up and we'll move on to the next step in the process. So now our transfer is complete from our previous iPhone. It says your data has been transferred to your other iPhone. And once that occurs, the screen's gonna go black and the Apple logo is gonna pop up and now this loading bar is gonna occur. So this is gonna take a minute to load. It's a much quicker process compared to setting it up manually, but this process is, shouldn't be that long. So once that's done loading, just come back to this video and we'll move on to the next steps. And I'll show you guys some features of how to get started on your brand new iPhone SE. So now our transfer is complete and to enter our phone, the home screen logo is going to pop up and you can just use your fingerprint that you just set up to enter and go into your phone just like that. And now as you can see, my previous data from my phone is now transferred to my iPhone SE. So this just popped up, use this iPhone when sharing your location. So of course we can just click use, you might as well have that turned on. As, as you're going to see, all my apps that were previously on my iPhone 12 are now on my iPhone SE. Some are taking a bit to load, but that's fine. They'll get there eventually. And once those are set up, you can use those on your iPhone SE. But now our iPhone SE is completely set up and ready to go. And I'm going to show you guys some great features to get started with the iPhone SE and how to walk you through and get a good feel for the phone when you start using it. Not everyone has an iPhone previous, so if you're new to the iPhone, this is going to be a great way to get started and get a good feel for the phone. So once that is all set up, depending on how fast it loads, come back to this video and I'm going to show you guys some great features to help you get started on your brand new iPhone SE. Even though you just transfer your data from your previous Apple device to this iPhone SE, in case you want to keep your data on your previous iPhone just in case something goes wrong or if you need that for a backup, it's going to give you the option on your previous phone to ask if you want to erase all your data or keep it on your previous phone. I recommend you keep it so you have that phone safe and if you need to use it, but of course it's up to you. But I just personally recommend keeping that data on your previous phone as well in case you need to back it up at some point or if the loading process didn't go correctly. So that's just my opinion. It's up to you. But if you want to have your new phone completely erase the data on your previous phone, you can definitely do that. But regardless, we have both our phones now, one that just transferred the data to our brand new iPhone SE, and our iPhone SE is brand ready to set up and ready to go. And I'm going to walk you guys through some features right now covering this new phone and all of its awesome abilities. I want to take a quick break from the video to introduce to you guys Rakuten, the best app to get cash back and other great deals. With Rakuten, you're going to be able to shop at stores you love and earn great rewards and other great deals just by using this app. And also with our exclusive link with Rakuten, you're going to be able to earn an additional $30 just by using it. So I'm going to show you guys how to access that link and earn your free $30 right now. Claim your free $30 from Rakuten using this exclusive link. All you want to do is just go to Safari or any web browser you have and type in bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. That is bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. Now that's in the link in the description as well of this video. And it's on the screen right here, so make sure to check those out to find it at the end of this video. But this link is exclusive to AppFind, so you only can get this $30 from using this link. So we made sure to get you guys the best rewards possible through this partnership. And you guys are also supporting our channel by doing this, so I want to thank you guys for that. But let's click on the link right here. It'll be in the description, like I said. And it's going to take you to this page, and it's going to say, All I can buy is to get $30 once you join and spend $30. So all you have to do is just create an account on Rakuten, which is completely free, no charges or costs involved. And once you spend that $30 on Rakuten, you're going to get a free additional $30 on top of that. So it's a win-win because you're going to be able to get free $30 
and you're gonna be able to get cash back while shopping at your favorite stores. So all you have to do is just put in your email and create a password and then you are good to go with this exclusive link with Rakuten. For using our exclusive link, I want to show you guys the Rakuten app. It is right here. It is super easy to use and navigate. It has up to 3,500 plus stores where you can earn cash back and other great rewards. So odds are that if there's 3,500 plus stores, one of these are going to be your favorite stores to shop at. So you're losing money if you would essentially do not download this app and use our exclusive link to get that extra $30. But as you can see, there's tons of different sections to choose from. Stores are members to love. For example, we got Macy's and Walmart. At Macy's, you can earn 10% cash back other great deals in the category section so if you have a specific category you want to look into for sports and goods or health and beauty or any of these you can gladly go to do that on this category section but if we click on sports and outdoors for example we're going to see lululemon athleta adidas all these other stores right here where you can earn cash back we're going to click on lululemon it's going to show you the two percent cash back right here and more information it's going to tell you when it expires it's going to show you these top coupons but this is just one of the categories of many Anything you want to shop, essentially Rakuten will have that. So you guys definitely got to download this app. You're losing out on money if you aren't using Rakuten. And think, keep in mind that you're also going to get an additional $30. So you're overall saving tons of money by using our exclusive link and using Rakuten in general. And do not miss out on this opportunity, guys. Enjoy. Now, since we have our phone set up, I'm going to walk you guys through how to go into the phone using the home button and all the other features that go along with that such as using the home screen and all the toolbar accesses and settings you can reach so basically like unlike the iphone 12 and the iphone 13 all the newer phones they don't have the home button but if you like the home button then this phone is the perfect phone for you a lot of people do like the home button and that's why the many reasons people buy the iphone se but to get in you're going to use your fingerprint like we set up previously in the video and then we're going to have access to the home screen so obviously we have all of our app pages to swipe from one app to the next you just move your hand it's really easy and very intuitive process we have my widgets right here which are also very easy to set up. I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up later in the video. But I wanna talk about the toolbar and the other parts of this home screen you can access. So with the iPhone 12 and iPhone 13, you usually have to swipe down to access all the other features on the home page. But when you do that on the iPhone SE, all that happens is it takes you to this notifications page. So if you get a notification, this is where they will pop up. You can clear any of them that receive. Obviously, I don't have any right now, but that's where they would go. To access all the other features, you have to swipe up like this, and we're gonna have access to all of these incredible features right here. So for example, we have our airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and our cellular. I haven't set up cellular on this phone yet, but you can easily access that once you just set up your cellular with data on the iPhone SE. And then we have our orientation right here. So basically what this means is, if you have this turned on, then basically when you turn your phone this way or any other way, it won't, the, cha the screen won't change with that, so it'll stay in this vertical orientation. But say you turn that off, and then you twist your screens, whether you're watching YouTube or any other thing, the screen will turn that way as well. So I know a lot of people like to do that. I prefer mine turned on so it doesn't flip when I change my orientation on my phone, but that is completely your call. We have focus mode. If you hold that down, you can see all the different modes you can access. We'll dive into that later. Then we have brightness right here. So brightness, you can obviously adjust by just moving that up and down. But if you hold that down right here, you're gonna have all these different options to choose from. So we have dark mode right here. If you click dark mode, basically what's gonna happen is your phone's gonna become a black screen opposed to a light screen. I prefer the light mode on opposed to the um, dark mode. It's up to you, it's your call though. And then also we have this night shift mode right here. And this is for when you're going to bed or you're on the screen in the dark and you don't wanna strain your eyesight because that can affect your sleep. All you have to do is just turn on night shift and basically what's gonna happen is your phone's gonna become a yellowish, dimmish color. And this is gonna allow you to see better without straining your eyes at night. I definitely recommend it. If you're on your phone with a bright screen, it can hurt your eyes and it can affect your sleeping. So you definitely don't want that to happen. So definitely keep night shift on at night. And then we have true tone. This just brings up more vibrant colors on the screen. But like I said, I prefer the standard settings that come along when you get the iPhone SE. We have our volume right here. This just turns up and down. And then we have all of these features down here. Obviously we have the flashlight like this. Flip that, you're gonna see the flashlights turned on. We have our timer. This is just an easier shortcut to get to the timer app opposed to having to go to the app. So as you can see, it'll take us right there. We'll go to the calculator app right here. That takes us there. We go to the camera. And then I'm gonna dive into some features about the camera later, but this is one of the cool 
easy ways to get to the camera just by swiping up like that. I definitely recommend checking that out if you don't want to have to scroll to all the apps. We go back here, we have our battery mode. So like I said, the iPhone SE is actually much higher battery percentage than previous phones. So it doesn't drain as much and it takes longer to drain all that battery. That's one of the bonuses about this phone. It also charges super quickly. So that's one of the best parts about this phone. And you don't have to worry about losing battery very fast. But if you do get to low, you can always turn on low battery mode. I definitely don't recommend doing that over 20% because it can actually harm your battery on your phone. So only do that when your battery is getting really low and you need your phone. And then basically we have screen recording right here. So what would happen is if I click that, I'd start recording my screen. And then after I've finished recording, I just have to click that again. And then I'd have a video that'd be saved to my camera roll of what I was doing on my phone. So I'm sure most of you know what that is. I'm not gonna click on that, but that is the screen recording section on this part of the iPhone. Then last we have this ear icon. If you hold that down, I'm gonna dive into tons of different details about what you can do with this later. But we have our speaker setting, background sounds, live listen, phone media. So I'll dive into that later, but these are all the features you can access through your home screen on your iPhone. Like I said, this does have a home button. So if you like the home button, this phone's meant for you. We have the notifications up here, but it is different from the other iPhones, like the newer iPhone 13 and iPhone 12, where the control center is down here. You have to swipe up to get it that way. So I'm glad we walked you guys through that process. And now we're going to move on to some other features to get you started with your brand new iPhone SE. I want to take a quick break from the video to introduce to you guys an incredible app where you can earn rewards and other great prizes simply by just answering questions taking surveys and sharing feedback, and that app is Quick Thoughts. Using our exclusive link I'm about to share with you guys, you guys can earn all these rewards by just answering thoughtfully different surveys and taking surveys and other quizzes. And I'm gonna show you guys how to access that link right now. Claiming free rewards and other great prizes with Quick Thoughts using our exclusive link, all you have to do is just go to Safari or any other web browser and type in bit.ly slash getquickthoughts. That is bit dot ly slash get quick thoughts it's also in the link in the description of this video and it is right here on the screen if you in case you forget it make sure to check those links out after this video but basically all you have to do is just type that in and click go it is going to actually take us to the app on the app store itself so essentially it's going to give you an overview of the app right here and look if you look right here it's going to show you all the different rewards and prizes you can actually win such as gift cards different discounts cash back and other great rewards all from this app just by taking simple surveys and sharing feedback on certain things. I'm going to show you guys the app in a second, but this is a quick preview of it. All you have to do is just download it today. Once we're on the app page using the link we gave you guys, you're just going to click open. It's going to take us to the Quick Thoughts app. It's going to ask you to sign up or if you're an existing user, just put in your information, but it's completely free to use. And keep in mind that you guys are supporting our channel by using the link we shared with you. But also on top of that, you guys are getting access to some of the best rewards and prizes with the different surveys that Quick Thoughts come with by using our exclusive link. So definitely keep that in mind and definitely use our link when downloading Quick Thoughts. On top of that, this is an overall win-win app where you guys actually have the chance to win great rewards and prizes simply by just taking quizzes in different surveys. So you guys do not want to miss out on this opportunity and make sure to click that link. It is bit.ly slash getquickthoughts. It's in the link in the description of the video. So just click that when this video is over and thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Enjoy. The physical features of the phone, I just wanna show you guys some of these. So obviously we have the home button right here and then up here we have our, our speaker. We have our front camera right here. So if you wanna take pictures with the front camera, you can do that and it'll capture it right through this camera right here. On the side, we have our volume button. This is down, this is up. And then we have ringer, um, Ringer turned on and off. So if you want the just vibrating on, you just turn this down here and you can see this little orange button that makes sure or shows you that it's off. But if you want it on to receive notifications or receive a noise when you get notifications, you can keep that on. If you want it off, it'll just receive a vibrate instead. Completely your call. On this side, we have the power button right here. And then we have the SIM card insert right here. So this is where you'd put in your SIM card. I haven't done this yet, but if you wanna put in your SIM card, it's super easy. All Apple iPhones come with a little key to unlock this and bring it out and then you just put in your SIM card. You can transfer that from your previous phone you had, just put in the SIM card from that phone into this one. Super easy to do, but the Apple cases or the products that come in, the cases it comes in, they do come with a little key to unlock that. So definitely easy to access and definitely easy to find in the box when you get your iPhone. Then the back, as you can see, we have this nice design for the Apple iPhone SE. 
It's a nice clear glass screen. It comes in multiple colors. So when you get your iPhone SE, depending on what color you want, it's up to you. I chose the sleek black. And then obviously the iPhone SE doesn't have as many cameras as the iPhone 13 or the newer iPhones, but it still has a great camera. I'm gonna show you guys the cool features with the camera. And then we have our flash button right here. So basically if you wanna turn on your flash, we just go into our iPhone, scroll down, click on flashlight. And now our flash that's gonna turn on, it's gonna come right out of here. And then of course we got the classic Apple logo. So that's a little bit about the physical features of the iPhone SE. Like I said, it's water resistant too. So if it gets wet, there's no big deal. It's a great phone. And like I said, the best feature about the iPhone SE is people who don't need a big phone, they can use this iPhone SE. It's much more portable and much smaller to fit into your pocket unless you, if you don't wanna carry out a bigger phone. I know a lot of people prefer smaller phones. I know over the years it's changed from people wanting bigger phones, they're more in demand, to people wanting smaller phones. It jumps back and forth depending on the time period. Right now, I'd say smaller phones are kind of big. So if you want an iPhone SE that can fit into your pocket, easy to carry and easily portable, I definitely recommend getting the iPhone SE. And that's one of the great features about this phone. Like I said, I transferred my data from my previous phone to this phone, so a lot of the homepage settings stay the same. So for example, I have this widget right here. I'm going to show you guys how to add widgets in a second, but I have this one right here. It gives me all my weather, my portraits, my time, TikTok, email, app store, music. So I'll show you guys how to set that up, but up to you how you want that done. And also I'm going to show you guys some of the custom apps that comes with when you download the phone. Obviously you get a lot of apps off the app store, but as all phones do, they come with certain apps already pre-downloaded on the phone. We have our mail, our calendar, our photos, camera, maps, clock, weather, news. So these are all apps that come with the phone. And then as you scroll to the right, you're gonna to start to see apps that you've downloaded from your previous iPhone that transferred over. And we also have our settings. This is gonna be a big feature for the iPhone SE. If you wanna set up and learn how to customize your phone any way you want, you can do that on the settings. I'm gonna show you guys how to use this right now. A lot of features can be accessed through the settings app and I definitely recommend checking it out when you get your brand new iPhone SE. I wanna show you guys a little bit about the home screen for the iPhone SE. So I'm sure most of you know how to use this, but if you are beginners, I'm just gonna walk you guys through how to use this home screen and a brief overview of it. So as you can see, Right here, we have our time as long with the date, but if you swipe to the right, it's actually gonna take us directly to the camera. So this makes it easier and it's kind of a shortcut to get to the camera opposed to having to go into your phone with your fingerprint or typing in your password. So this allows for easier access in case you wanna just take a quick picture, save some time. So that's one feature about the homepage you can access through this. But also, if you double click, I don't have it set up, but it'll take you to Apple Cash. So I think it's pretty cool if you're in a rush and you have to pay for something quickly, all you have to do is double click that home screen or that home button and it's gonna take you directly to Apple Cash and you just have to add money. Obviously I haven't done that yet, so it really wouldn't work, but that's a cool feature about the iPhone's home button on the home page. But besides that, obviously you just get into your phone simply by using the home button, but besides that, that's a little bit about the home screen. You guys previously saw when I was showing you guys the camera, the photographic styles option. This is brand new for the iPhone SE. Basis allows you to have a preset style when you take pictures on your camera. And this is brand new for the SE, like I said. So when I click set it up, it just took me to this page and it's gonna show me all these different styles to choose from. So when I take pictures, these different styles are gonna be automatically set up depending on which one I choose. So we have photographic style, we have rich contrast, we have vibrant, we have warmth, and we have cool. So depending on what you like the most out of all of these, you can choose these. I'm gonna choose standard actually for the moment, just cause I like my pictures the way they come out when I take the picture. Click use standard. And now our camera is set up. And as you can see, it's a very nice camera, even for an iPhone SE, which doesn't have as many cameras as the newer iPhones, like the 12 or 13, but it's still a great camera. And you have all the other options to choose from, like video, slow-mo, photo, portrait, panoramic, and then you have access to your pictures right here. I took screenshots earlier, which I showed you guys in the video, but like I said, this is our camera and you can choose your photographic style, which is brand new on the iPhone SE to your liking and these different styles will be preset to your camera when you take it. So depending on how you like your camera styles to be chosen, 
You can choose whatever one you want and you're gonna be good to go to have your camera and your pictures look exactly how you want when you take those pictures. So regardless if you're using an iPhone SE, iPhone 12, 13, or any other Apple product such as an iPad or even the Apple Watch, it's important that you want to have Siri set up. Siri is a universal option on all of your Apple products, but it's important it can really come in handy in certain situations. So I wanna show you guys how to turn that on and have it at your aid whenever you need her. All you have to do is just go to settings and scroll down all the way to Siri and search right here. And the important one we want to look at is listen for Hey Siri. So this will allow us to contact Siri just by simply saying her name. And let's set it up right now. So set up Hey Siri. We're going to set that up right now. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, send a message. Hey Siri, how's the weather today? Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Hey Siri, play some music. And just like that, we are all set with Hey Siri. So whenever you want to contact her, if you have a question or need to find something out or look up something, you can just contact Hey Siri by simply just saying her name and she'll come to your beckon. But it's super easy to do and I definitely recommend having that set up. I use Siri all the time. It just makes things easier how to type in or look for information and go through the hassle of finding certain stuff because Siri can just provide that right off of just talking to you. So I definitely recommend checking that out when you get the chance. I wanna show you another way to use the home button to contact Siri without having to say her name. There's tons of different ways to contact her, but this is one of the easiest ones. If you look at the home button right here, all you have to do is just hold that down and you're gonna have this type to Siri come up. So this is a different way to access her. And instead of asking her through your voice, you can just type in what you want what information you want to know or any of the questions you have to ask her and this is a different way to do it so whatever way you prefer you can gladly do so but this is one way to access her and while we're talking about different ways to maneuver the home button if you actually double click the home button like this it's going to take you to all your previously or currently opened apps and i recommend clearing them simply by just swiping up like this by having all your apps open and not clearing them like that you're actually drain your battery slightly faster. So you don't want to do that. I'm always the type of guy to clear those. But if you didn't know that, all you have to do is just double click that home button. You'll be all set with clearing those apps. So make sure you try that out when you get the chance. If you're still using old fashioned, slow charging and messy lightning charging cables, it is time for you to say goodbye to those. Your phone has incredible MagSafe technology built right into it, which allows you to wirelessly and magnetically charge your devices. If you're going to invest so much money into an iPhone, then you should be giving yourself a premium experience, which all starts with something that you need to do every day, and that is charging your actual device. Get the absolute most out of your iPhone with Elgear's 2-in-1 Lightning Charging Stand. This stand allows you to magnetically and wirelessly charge both your iPhone and your AirPods simultaneously. Place your phone anywhere on the sleek charging stand and you're going to feel that magnet automatically attach right to your phone. Elgear wanted to make sure that you can use your phone for all of its uses without having to take it off the stand, which is why they included dual coil technology so you can use your phone both vertically and horizontally in landscape mode. This means that you can still send your messages, emails, or anything else, or you can flip your phone sideways and watch your favorite videos and movies while your phone is still being charged in the background. This stand is made with the highest quality materials like metal and tempered glass, and they also put non-slip silicone on the bottom of the stand. Elgear used official MagSafe technology, so you never need to worry about your phone falling off the stand or having to fidget around with your phone to get it in the right position. As I already mentioned, this is a two-in-one lightning charging stand, so you can charge two devices at the same time by using the second wireless charger on the back of this stand. This is perfect for charging a pair of headphones or even a second iPhone. Wait no longer and finally go upgrade your charging experience by going to lgear.com, stop using those old fashioned slow charging and messy lightning cables and upgrade to the two in one lightning charging stand that's perfect for your desk or your nightstand and it's also being sold at an incredibly discounted rate. So go to lgear.com, the link's on the screen and down in the description, enjoy. One detail I forgot to talk about on the iPhone SE, it's pretty standard, it's pretty obvious to pick up but obviously to charge your phone, you can place the charger right here. The iPhone SE has increased battery saving power, so you won't reduce your battery or drain your battery as fast as previous iPhone SEs, like I said. But in case you wanna charge your phone, it comes with a fast charger that Apple gives you in the case. All you have to do is just plug it into here. And like all iPhones, as the new ones are getting released, they're able to charge faster. 
So this iPhone, since it's small, doesn't have as much data as like an iPhone 13 or an iPhone 12, you'll be able to charge it super fast and quickly, and it'll be charged up in no time. Also, if you want to place on a wireless charger, all you have to do is just place the phone on a wireless charger and the iPhone has battery packages right in the back of it. So you'll be able to charge your phone without having to use a wire completely your call. So it's up to you. You can choose to plug it in right here or use a wireless charger up to you on the iPhone SE. I know I've watched you guys through a complete beginner's process, how to set up the iPhone SE, some tips and tricks along the way, how to use your phone to the maximum ability when you first get the new SE. But in case you want to learn in more detail, I recommend going to the tips app. It's right here. All you have to do is just search it in on the app bar. It comes with the app. It comes with the iPhone. So if you click on that, it's going to give you all these tips that I'm sure you didn't know about or maybe you didn't know about for the iPhone SE and other Apple products. In case you want to broaden your information and knowledge for the iPhone SE, I recommend just clicking on that tips app to learn more information about this iPhone and other Apple products and what this iPhone is capable of. But that's all the cool features to check out in case you want to learn in more detail about other information regarding the iPhone SE. I hope I did a good job explaining this all to you. But like I said, if you want to know more detail or things I could have forgotten about, you can always let us know in the comments and go to the tips app to let us know what features we want to talk about in future videos and how to use your phone to the maximum ability. So you can access a lot of amazing features in the settings section, but I want to talk about one in particular, and that allows you to actually activate different gestures or activities on your iPhone SE by using the back of your phone or tapping the back of your phone. This is super cool. So if you wanted to access Siri or take a screenshot by using the back of your phone, you can do that. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Super easy. All you have to do is just go to settings, then scroll down to accessibility right here. And then we're going to scroll down to to touch and basically when we get to touch you want to scroll all the way down until you see back tap and I have it turned on but now depending on what action you want to look at we have double tap and triple tap so for double tap I have it set to screenshot so let me show you how this works so if I pick up my phone and double tap the back like this it's going to take a screenshot like that which is I think is super cool say we want to do it to flashlight for example tap double tap the back and now flashlight's gonna turn on. And you have tons of different options to choose from. We have anywhere from camera, control, center, flashlight, home, lock rotation, mute, notification, ton of options to choose from. And then like I said, we have triple tap turned on as well. So if you wanna have triple tap for the camera, for example, we just double click three times like this. And it's going to take me right to the camera. I think that is a super cool feature you guys definitely want to check out. I definitely didn't know that that's something you could do on the iPhone SE. But if you want to check it out, definitely check it out. And if you want to use that back tap to your best of your ability and use your iPhone to the best of your ability, I definitely think it's worth checking out. It's an incredible feature. I'm pretty sure you can access that on all types of iPhones, but for the brand new iPhone SE, it's pretty cool. Especially because it's a small phone, you don't have to reach as far because the phone's not as big and it can easily fit in your pocket. I think it's a cool feature, the back tap. Definitely check it out on the accessibility section on your iPhone SE. We all like to listen to our favorite music or audio or whatever that may be, but sometimes if you listen to music too loud or audio too loud or even too much, it can actually damage your ears which is why I want to show you guys a great setting that Apple actually set up on the iPhone SE to prevent your ears getting damaged from loud music or if you're listening to anything too loud. And all you have to do is just go to settings right now. And then once you go on settings, all you have to do is just scroll down to sound and haptics and you're going to see this headphone audio section and you just click headphone safety. So basically this is going to help you prevent from listening to music too loud or any type of audio. So protect your hearing, your iPhone will measure your headphone audio levels. And if you see the recommended seven day limit, a notification will be sent to your phone and the volume will be turned down. So that's, I, for, I just got this phone, so I have no notifications based on this. I have zero right here. But for reduced loud sounds, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Your phone can analyze your headphone audio and reduce any sound that is over a set level. So by turning this on, you have this, this set level right here. And this is a, this is the loudest it will get under these settings if you turn it on. So basically, if you're listening to music and it goes anywhere over 85, then your volume will get turned down to 85 to prevent it from listening too loud. You can change this to your liking depending on how much loud music you can handle. But I recommend the setting that it's already set at when you get your iPhone SE. This is the standard setting. You don't want to go above this. It can damage your ears. And I just wanted to make you guys, let you guys know that this is an important thing to check out for your headphone safety and your ear safety. 
So make sure when you listen to music, you might want to turn this on just in case you might be listening to music too loud. It's definitely worth checking out. And while we're talking about safety, also I want to bring up the eyes because as you know, staring at your phone can cause a lot of damage to your eyes, especially at night when it's dark out and you have a bright iPhone screen. It can also affect your sleep in a negative impact. So to prevent that, I also recommend while you're at it, going to your sound toolbar right here and then going to brightness. Obviously, when you're going to bed at night, you're going to want to turn this down. But also, I recommend turning on night shift. This is going to allow your screen to turn like a nice orange yellowish color. It's going to be much dimmer than the normal color with this off. It's going to prevent you from damaging your eyesight when you're going to bed. And it's also going to allow you to get a better night's sleep because you're not going to have that all that stimulation from the bright lights going into your eyes, into your brain before you go to bed. So I recommend before going to bed, turn down your brightness and also turn on night shift. This is going to help you get better night's sleeps, maybe get less of a headache. And also while you're at it, turn on that headphone safety to prevent ear damage on your iPhone S. I want to take a quick moment of your time to introduce you an incredible app where you can get free gift cards and cash simply by just taking surveys and shopping online. This app is called Swagbucks. You can download Swagbucks using our exclusive link and with this link you can actually get a $5 bonus on top of all the other great rewards you can get through the app. Now this link is exclusive to AppBind only and you are supporting our channel by using it, but you're also getting a $5 bonus and incredible rewards just by signing up for the app. So it is a complete win-win. I'm gonna show you guys a link right now and how to access it and get that $5 free bonus. Access this link and get that $5 bonus. All you have to do is just go to Safari or your web browser and type in bit.ly slash get swag bucks bonus that is bit.ly slash get swag bucks bonus it's on the screen right here but it's also going to be in the description of this video if you ever want to check it out right after this video is over with but if we click this link and go it's going to take us to the page where swag bucks is and where you have the ability to download the app so right here you're going to see right off the bat it's going to say five dollar bonus simply by just signing up through this link right here. So you're gonna be able to earn free gift cards to your favorite stores through Swagbucks, but remember you get this additional $5 bonus right here. So it's a complete win-win scenario. Like I said, you're doing us a favor, but you're also doing yourself a huge favor and you do not wanna miss out on this app. I'm gonna run you guys through the app because it's super cool and it's definitely worth checking out. So to show you guys a preview of the app, like I said, you can earn tons of free gift cards to your favorite stores and you can shop online using Swagbucks. But for example, it's gonna take you to a survey page where you're gonna have access to tons of different surveys where you can get cash back and other great rewards. It's gonna tell you how long each survey is, what kind of survey it is involving, and how much money you're gonna get or what kind of rewards you're gonna get off of that. So that's one example of it. But you can also shop online. It's gonna tell you how much cash back you can get at certain stores. If your favorite stores, it's definitely worth getting some cash back and saving some money. You're gonna be able to scan receipts and receive bonuses. So tons of different ways to get rewards and earn cash back through Swagbucks. Like I said, it is definitely worth checking out if you wanna shop and save some money while doing so. And remember, you get a $5 bonus using our link, which is bit.ly get swag slash get swag bucks bonus it's on the screen right here it's also in the description so definitely check that out after this video and i thank you guys for watching this part one last feature i want to show you guys is the amazing do not disturb features that come with the iphone se so as you know, when you're doing work, you don't want and you're receiving notifications on your phone or any of your Apple products that can get kind of annoying at points and also can cause a distraction. So to prevent this, Apple's created multiple do not disturb or focus settings, depending on what task you're doing, whether it's working, sleeping, or just want to be away from your phone. And it's really cool to access, it's super easy. You just go to the toolbar right here and you go to this focus section. If you hold that down, basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna see do not disturb, personal work, and sleep. So depending on what you're doing in the moment, you can turn these on. So for example, if I turned on sleep, what would happen is my phone screen would get very dim and I wouldn't receive notifications under the certain amount of time period I put for my sleep cycle. So for example, if I set my sleep cycle to 12 or 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., I wouldn't receive a notification until then and my phone would be much dimmer. So if I turn that on right now, my phone screen gets dimmer. As you can see, it turned on. I'm not gonna receive any notifications, but more, in more detail, if I go to settings right here, you're gonna see that I have my sleep turned on and I have it turned on at bedtime and I have my next bedtime set from 12 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. And what would happen is I would receive a note, I wouldn't receive any notifications or get an alarm 
of these notifications when I'm sleeping during these periods of time. This allows you to get a better night's sleep, and it's gonna be the same with any of the other focus modes, whether it's work, personal. So depending on what time periods you set for these focus modes, you're not gonna receive notifications during those times, and you're gonna have the ability to turn on or off certain apps that you wanna get notified for. So say you want, you get text messages because like some of them could be urgent, then you wanna keep that on. Then you can definitely have that turned on on the focus mode settings. But this is a cool way to stay on top of your stuff without having the distractions of your phone. So I definitely recommend checking this out if you want to be more productive, if you want to get better night's sleep. This is one way to do that on the iPhone SE. Definitely worth checking out. So go ahead and try that out if you get the chance on your iPhone SE. So for the iPhone 12, 13, all the newer editions of the iPhone, they don't have the home button as we previously talked about. So it's a different way to take a screenshot opposed to the iPhone SE. So if we had the iPhone 12 or 13, what you do is you would just click this side button or the power button along with the upper volume button. And that would just take a screenshot of what page you're on or whatever you need to send out. But it's different for the iPhone SE because it is actually has the home button. And as you previously learned, if you had an older version of the iPhone, you know that to take a screenshot, all you have to do is just click the home button and the power button at the same time. So to do that, super easy. All we have to do is just like this. And boom, we have our screenshot right here. It's going to go to this corner right here. So if you want to delete it, if you by accidentally did that, because I know that sometimes can happen, you can do that. You can just click delete or you can send it through all your contacts on iMessage, Snapchat, Instagram, Gmail, whatever that need to be. Or if you just pre press done, you have the option to save it to your files, photos, or just delete the screenshot. I'm just going to save it to save some storage but that's how you take screenshots on the iphone se i know it's different if you've already had an iphone 12 or an iphone 13 it's different from the iphone se since there's no home button but in case you didn't know that or if you went back to the home button and you forgot that's how you take a screenshot on your iphone se so as you can see i previously showed you guys the home page with all of our apps on it but i wanted to show you a little bit more detail before we end this video so basically you have all your apps right here right but if you scroll to the last page where all your apps you actually have this app library and what your phone does is it actually categorizes all the apps based on suggestions recently added social entertainment all the different categories and basically if you want to just search one of them you can search it right up here in this app library it's going to show you all these apps so this is one way to find all the apps you're looking for if you need to find any of them it's one way to do it I don't really have a preference, but like I said, if you want to categorize them and access them in these different categories, so it's definitely your call. Also, I want to show you guys another way to access your apps. Just simply swipe down on your phone and you're going to have the Siri suggestions pop up, which are the apps that Siri or your iPhone suggests for you. But you can also search your apps by just typing in what you want to find. And this is one way to do it. If you don't want to swipe and look for your apps, if someone has a lot of apps, I can see why they want to use this because it can get cluttered and it can be hard to find certain apps. So if you want to just search it instead of looking for it, I definitely recommend doing that. But that's one thing I think you guys should definitely know about the iPhone SE. You have this access to this iPhone library right here or this app library. And then you also can just swipe down like that to search what you're looking for. I always prefer having some sort of background noise, whether I'm sleeping or working, just to stay productive. I like something in the background. I feel like it's awkward when it's quiet. So I always have background noise. And on the iPhone SE, you can actually turn on background noises for whenever you need it, whether it's working or sleeping. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. I think it's a super cool feature you should check out. So to access the control center, you swipe up. Like if it was on the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12, you have to swipe down. But regardless, here we are in the control center. And what you're going to see is we're going to get to this ear icon right here. And we're just going to click on that or hold it down. And now this is called the speaker icon. Essentially, we're going to see this background sounds option. We're going to have it off right now. We're just going to turn it on. And obviously, volume is low at the moment. But now we have dark noise volume coming out. Tons of different options to choose from. As you can see, you can choose whatever kind of noise you want out of all of these options right here, depending on what suits you. I'm going to shut that off at the moment, but that's one of the many background sounds you can choose from. And I think you guys should turn this on if you like some sort of noise in the background. When I don't have a fan with me or some sort of noise maker when I go to sleep, I usually turn on the background sounds on my phone because I don't like sleeping in the quiet. But like I said, that's your preference, but this is a cool feature I don't know if you guys knew about on the iPhone SE that you guys should definitely check out when you get the chance. I'm going to now show you guys how to contact Siri to turn on 
your flashlight without having to do it manually. And this is pretty cool because it's actually a spell in Harry Potter. So for those who've seen Harry Potter and watched the movies or read the books, there's a spell called Lumos. And what happens when you say Lumos is your wand lights up to act as a flashlight to see in the dark. And now Siri, by telling her that specific phrase, she'll actually turn on your flashlight. So you will have that light if it's in the dark and you need that flashlight turned on. And I think this is a super cool feature that everyone should try. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. All you have to do is just go, hey Siri, Lumos. And as you can see, she has turned on the flashlight. It was super easy, simple process like that. And the cool part about that is it is actually the Harry Potter spell from the movies and the books. So that's what I thought was really cool. I think it's worth checking out. And if you are a Harry Potter fan, it's definitely worth checking out. But that's one of my favorite parts about Siri. I always use Siri on a daily basis, but that's a cool little neat tip or a trick that I thought was pretty cool to check out. And I definitely recommend trying that if you are a Harry Potter fan for your iPhone SE. As most of you know, Apple products, whether it's the iPhone, iPad, or any of the other products, they all have great speakers and they can allow you to play music really loud. But I want to show you guys how to increase your volume further than you thought it could go. And this is really cool because it actually makes your phone so much louder, especially when you're listening to headphones. And it actually sounds like your iPhone's now a speaker. And I think it's super cool. And I definitely want to show you guys on this iPhone SE right here. Super easy to do. All you have to do is just go to settings. We're going to scroll all the way down to accessibility. Tons of cool features to check out in accessibility. When you have the time, I definitely recommend going to this settings page. And you can find tons of neat features to check out. But regardless, we're going to go down to audio and visual right here. And then we're going to go down to headphone accommodations. So now when we're on headphone accommodations, you're going to see I have my noise or my volume on moderate. But basically, if I just turn this up to strong and I play music, you're going to notice that's going to be an increased volume that you never expect or you never knew about. And I think it is super cool and never knew your phone could do this, but the iPhone SE can actually play. It's a small phone, so you think it wouldn't be able to play music that loud. But if you turn this on, it actually is going to sound way louder than you expect. Definitely worth checking out. Like I said, all you have to do is just go to settings, accessibility, then just go to audio and visual, and then headphone accommodations, you'll be good to go. Just turn this up to strong, and you're going to be hearing your volume and your audio much louder than you'd ever expect. But as you can see, we're on the homepage of my iPhone SE, and as you can see, we have all the apps and different information that comes with the phone once you get it. And this data is automatically transferred from your previous phone if you set it up that way. But I want you to look at this widget right here I have where it shows my weather, my photos, clocks, TikTok, my mail, and so many more options to choose from. But I want to show you guys actually how to set up your own widgets on your own iPhone SE. Super easy to do. All you have to do is just choose a random area on the home screen and just hold down like this. And then once you do that, basically what's going to happen is all these apps are going to start to shake and you're going to have these minus buttons. This means you can delete these apps or remove them from your home screen. But right here, this plus button is the part I want to point out. So if we click plus right here, now we're going to have the option to search widgets and add them to our homepage. So if you look at all of these right here, you're going to see that we have tons of different options to choose from and you can choose any widgets that you want to your liking. So for example, if we want to add this fitness one right here. Super easy to do. It's activity. So we have this type of widget or we have the wider version that looks like this. I prefer the small one so we're just going to click add widget and boom we are good to go that is now on my home screen so if i want to track my exercise you're going to be able to do so and just look on your home screen opposed to having to go to the fitness app which i definitely recommend it's much easier to do and while we're at it you notice when i hold down my home screen like this and like this you're going to see that all these apps have the minus button, the option to delete them. So if we click, for example, lift right here and choose delete it, we have the option to either remove lift from the home screen or delete the app. So if you delete the app, you're going to have to go back into the app store to re-download it. But if you remove it from the home screen, it's just going to no longer appear on the home screen. But that's no worries. If you still want to access it, you can go to your app library, which is located all the way over here. And you can either just search it up or you're going to see it if you scroll down. And that's one way if one app is too distracting for you, say you're always on social media and you're using it too much and you're like, okay, I don't want this on my home screen because I'm going to be inclined to use it. You can just remove it from your home screen so you don't have to go on it or you'll forget to go on it. And I definitely recommend it if you're spending too much time on your phone or on certain apps. This is one way to fix that. But these are some cool features about the home screen on the brand new iPhone SE.
With the iOS 15 update, I'm sure most of you noticed that the search bar on Safari is actually down here now, opposed to being up top. I know that's caused a lot of controversy, whether people like it on the bottom or the top. I personally like it on the top. Just for the sake of this video, I moved it down here, but you could actually move it back to the top of the Safari page if you want to. So if you want it not at the bottom like it is right now, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It's super easy. All you have to do just go to settings right here and just scroll all the way down to Safari. Super easy. And you're going to notice if we go down, you're just going to see this option right here. We just click single tab right here. And now the search bar is going to be right at the top of the toolbar on Safari. And now we're going to show you guys and boom, it is right here back at the top. So it's completely up to you. I know iOS 15 changed that. And I know a lot of people like it at the top. So if you want to keep it up there, you can gladly do that and easily do that. Just go to settings, go to Safari and change that right away. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was a complete beginner's guide for the brand new iPhone SE. If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more great content like this. I also encourage you guys to go to appfindvip.com to subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered directly to your email inbox. You'll also be entered in our app find giveaways where you can win incredible prizes and rewards. Just to sign up while you can. And then also I encourage you guys to go follow us on Instagram where you can get the best tips, tricks, and hidden features on all new technology coming out right on our Instagram channel. So definitely go give that a follow. And then lastly, I encourage you guys to go to bestrewardapps.com to discover all these incredible reward apps where you can earn incredible prizes and cash back with all of these. So definitely check out these links at the end of this video. They're going to be in the description of this video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.